Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Igo Rar, and my e-dick has just got done with its slither around the new Ezemir. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about the patch that many members of the community have been expressing a reasonable amount of discontent with. Is this the death of the game? Well, almost certainly, but it's died four times before, so I'm sure it'll bounce back. I hope. If you haven't already guessed, I firmly fall into the category of players that have not been pleased with the latest update. I don't think it's all negative, but I'm generally just not overall pleased with the direction that a lot of the new mechanics are taking the game in. I feel that this patch has had a good number of extremely disruptive bugs in it, new mechanics generally feel rushed, unpolished, and added without much real thought as to why they're being placed in the game. But before I start talking about the new content in the game, I want to talk about something outside of the game that was the hype leading up to the patch. I have not been happy with developer communications and presentations leading up to the following update. Outside looking in, this is just my perspective, so take it with a grain of salt. Well, I mean, it's planet side, so take it with the whole fucking salt mine and the harasser you drove in on. My issues begin with the developer's livestream reveal, which showed off lots of neat ideas like the storm, some new base designs that looked a bit more fresh than what we're used to, abandoned vehicles, the shattered warp gate, missions, and campaign systems that were going to help address some new player concerns. There's certainly more to it than that, but for myself, that's what I took away from it. Generally speaking across the board, the mission statement of what they wanted to accomplish with this update was one that I could get behind, but even at a first glance, I had trouble wrapping my head around some of the ideas. Daily quests, I mean, sorry, missions, being part of the new player experience? It wasn't really well explained. How the storm works and then it's part of the ever-evolving chaos and the lore of the world, right? I understood that. They also even said it was kind of there to chase down big zergs that have been fighting for a while, but... They didn't really continue on to explain how that would benefit gameplay or, you know, really anything else. The big thing for me, though, has been the campaign and how it was presented. It was only talked about on the reveal stream, probably because it wasn't ready to be shown off, and that's fine. But this is less to do with our development team and more to do with the gaming industry as a whole. It's shown me that time and time again, it is not worthy of my hype until the final product is in my hands. Naturally, it rubbed me the wrong way and made a mission statement that I liked with explanations that I didn't not really jive well. Live commentary is difficult, and in the position of a developer, you really want to make sure you don't want to misspeak. A live stream as a format is a bit of a risk in this way. And additionally, I don't see the positive gains of doing it like this so far. It's slow as we watch console commands get pounded into the chat box, it's easily derailed, it's long which makes getting your message across to your players that much more difficult because the amount of people willing to watch a 90 minute VOD just to get the latest scoop of what's coming down the pipeline are pretty slim. If I may suggest a solution going forward, how about doing a video next time, Rel? It's going to make communications much more clear, you're not going to have to worry about missteps like you know, that a live stream could have, and you know, it's what your background is in, right? It should be an easy job with you at the helm. Overall, the fact that the mission system wasn't shown off, even if it was for a good reason, has left a bad taste in my mouth. What came out was fetch quests that bored me to death, and it starts to make that cynical part of your brain ask, you know, did they know? Were they afraid to show it off? It's little things like this that your players are not going to forget, and I sure as shit will be skeptical of anything coming out of the developing team's mouth in the future unless we have some sort of working concept to go with it. Communications here have not been good, and that's disregarding all the little tiddly things happening on the forums, Reddit, and Discord leading up to this update. So on to the new features and we'll start with the mission system. Now remember what we were sold here, it's part of a new player experience, uh, it's supposed to replace alert rewards, it's supposed to spice up gameplay and encourage players to partake in play styles that they may have not tried before, and it also added world event like mechanics with the drill and the convoy. How the hell this system is supposed to benefit new players kind of baffles me. Sometimes you roll a rare quest and get offered a shiny new gun, it creates some reason to come back every day to check out if you got lucky again. But the system itself inherently encourages running off on your own to complete many of the tasks, something that is the exact opposite of what I think the new player experience needs. 
Even the events like the convoy and the drill that do encourage teamwork don't do much else than create a task that is difficult to complete on your own. Convoys in the drills don't have any sort of auto squad system that help group up players that wish to participate and find each other to do these tasks. When they happen, it's really obscure. The variance of how things can play out is extreme. I have seen convoys that start to finish didn't even take a scratch. I have seen them get raffle stomped a few hexes away from the warp gate because they just so happened to wander into a huge zerg. The way I see it is the mission system isn't driving combat, it isn't driving community interaction, or increasing the likelihood that new players will wind up in the same place more often. Following the mission blindly as a new player seems like a very good way to get more frustrated with what is already a lackluster new player experience. The one thing that I feel may have potential with this system are the world event like things like the convoy and the drill, but in their current state it's just undercooked, missing essential systems that help ensure that the system drives conflict and battle over something that isn't the typical capture point to capture point gameplay. The other angle of the mission system is the rewards, and I think the community has seriously jumped on this issue already, so I'll keep my piece brief. The rewards are almost non-existent, your high-level players are being offered loads of XP boosters which they do not need, ISO payout is nearly non-existent, A7 payout is nearly non-existent, the time it takes to complete them versus the payout of the old rewards from the alerts are pretty terrible. I get that we want to make shorter gameplay sessions more rewarding. Alerts may pop up at times that's not convenient for your dinner or bedtime, right? I understand that. The developers also want to control payout for rewards better, and after all, the old system had quite a high level of variance in it into how often people could be participating into alerts simply because of how that as a system works. People used to AFK in the warp gate and cheese the alert rewards, A7 payouts were too high. The old system wasn't perfect, but I don't think any of the reasons stated here justify throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Overall, I'm not impressed with the mission system to the point where I genuinely think it's negatively impacting gameplay. Moving on to the campaign, and sadly again, I'm unimpressed. I'm not going to critique the story and the lore because I believe that's quite a subjective thing. I mean, after all, there are people that thought the new Star Wars films were good, so it seems like shit taste isn't the only pandemic we're dealing with. Again, the big thing that we were sold here is new player experience and its fetch quests. Like, do I even need to say much more than that? It's fetch quests. A classic tactic for padding out the length of a game in an MMO that's supposed to have an endless gameplay loop where the players are the biggest part of the game's content. I'm just outright confused on this one. Nothing about the quests encourage community interaction outside of bumping into other players that just so happen to be doing it as well, something that'll become less and less of an occurrence as time goes on. Even if it did, what was the plan here, right? Like, was a new player intended to go approach a random squad and ask them to drop everything that they were doing to go escort them on a fetch quest? A it feels like some sort of automated system was missing from both the mission system and the campaign system to better help find players who want to do these things group up. Not just new players, all players that wanted to participate. So many of the fetch quests encourage you to run off alone, chasing around markers similar to the mission system. Again, I don't see how this is helpful for the new player experience. It doesn't teach anyone anything fundamental about the game, and it doesn't encourage people to squad up to work together to finish the quests. It honestly feels like a shallow experience with the minimum effort put into it, a feature that was only there to market and try to drum up hype for how big the new patch is gonna be. It doesn't drive conflict, it doesn't add any sort of new gameplay, it just... Single player is simply something I am not interested in in Planetside. I played it on the PTS, it bored me to death, I don't want to do it again on live. The content of this game is community, 
the players, the scale of battle. This system feels like it has no place belonging in the game and is a big reason for right now I feel like the game really lacks a clear vision of what it even wants to be. That's not even addressing the pricing issues of the campaign, but again, the community has already jumped on this issue quite hard, but for myself, quite frankly, it could be free with quadruple the rewards it offers now, and I still wouldn't play it. It's boring, repetitive, low effort, buggy, just a waste of time for both players and developers. Moving on to the storm, and I must admit I haven't had many experiences with it because just like the rest of your player base, as soon as this thing shows up, I get the hell out of dodge. Again, I'm not so sure what the plan was with this one. I understand the idea communicated was that it was a way to kill off a battle that has been raging on too long, and I don't even think that's a bad idea. After all, we've all been stuck at the crown for an hour once before in a brawl where the battle lines didn't budge an inch. But so far, my experiences with it have been uninteractive and anticlimactic and haven't gotten much more complex than, oh, the storm's here, well, time to leave. It moves around the map too slowly to achieve its goal. It's not particularly interactive, it doesn't change how we play the game, it just changes where we can play the game. It's extremely aggravating to deal with as an attacker in particular. I have seen several fights that were going well for the attackers on a three point base that was slowly going down, then the storm shows up, blew up all the spawns, ended a fight that wasn't even really a big zerg, but just a slow grinding fight. I think there's some potential with this idea, and certainly the concept is kinda badass, and I wish once it gets fleshed out, there's more little things like this added to the battlefield, but it needs a more clearly defined purpose, and there needs to be a way for players to interact with it, rather than just some storm that just shows up and you run away. I feel like there's actually quite a bit of potential for an idea like this, but in its current state, it's much like a lot of the other content that was added in this update. Underdeveloped, buggy, and rushed. Added into the game without much thought into how it would affect game flow, and more placed there to just drum up a bigger list of exciting features that was coming this patch. And as I start to slowly peel back the layers on many of these mechanics, the game is progressively feeling more rushed, small, and just unrefined. But now that we're done with the taters, we can finally move on to the meat, and that's the big changes made to the map. Trying to go over base by base and review each individual one is enough for an entirely different video of itself, so I'm going to make some pretty general sweeping statements. The biggest changes that I'm happy to be seeing made are a reduction in the number of bases, an evening out of the lattice lines, and the repositioning of the warp gates. The old north warp gates were way too cramped together, leading to stale biofarms. I genuinely feel like there are just too many bases in this game already that don't see any real action, and having fewer bases, in theory, should mean we have more time to focus and develop the environments that we fight around, and some of the bases really do show that. However, I have three major gripes with overall design, one of which is this strange obsession with these capture points that are all stacked on top of each other, or are all laid out in like a straight line or some combination of the two. The tech plant is probably the best example of this. All three points are closed and cramped together and lack anything that resembles a tug of war. The flow is odd in bases like this, and generally speaking what happens is that one faction just clears out the building, grabs all the points, and most of the bases that have implemented this design so far have been my least favorite to fight at. The second thing I don't like is the number of bases that are just quite empty. The broken biolabs and again the construction bases really have had some issues that disrupt game flow. I haven't had many fights at these bases and the number of times that I have they've usually just been a one-way stomp or nobody showed up to fight. Not to mention the lack of cover 
at these bases. If if you aren't in a vehicle, you're just you're just doing it wrong. The number of bases overall have been reduced, and I feel like this has made this issue kind of worse, but I also hope the devs don't abandon the idea entirely, but it really does need some redesigning. Trying to get vehicles, infantry, and air all to come together at one base to create a combined arms experience is a really good idea to attempt, but it looks like this go around, it just kind of missed the mark. Um, although this, this is one of the rare cases where I will say, I'm actually fine that we failed in this regard because I think this is actually going to be a good learning experience in base design. The last issue I have with many of the base changes is the lack of cover or maneuverability in some of the bases. To point to a specific base where I feel like both of these failures are abundant is Jaeger's Fist. An open capture point with few pathways into it or around it. The base is both cramped but yet lacks cover. The ever persistent issue of Hesh Hills pounding on the point were not really addressed all that well. Air to ground is still abundantly effective on the point because it has no cover. It's just an issue that I have with a lot of bases in this game. It's not exclusive to Esimir, but I do find it particularly odd that so much went into changing this base, yet it plays out remarkably similar to how it did before. I, I don't know, maybe try adding a big white crate to the Hesh Hill next time? I don't know, I'm just spitballing ideas here. Overall, I'm genuinely not very impressed with this update. I may not have mentioned them individually, but I have personally ran into loads of bugs with this patch. Many of the new mechanics feel underdeveloped and added without real purpose or vision, and I think some of them have negatively impacted gameplay. The split vision of a single player campaign just confuses and bores me. The storm frustrates me, the missions are underwhelming and don't impact gameplay gameplay, and the map itself is a bit hit and miss. I can see lots of potential for changes made, but I can also see the exact same potential in many of the other systems and mechanics that have already been thrown to the wayside. I would have much rather seen an update to an old system that wasn't working, plus these map changes, and not an underdeveloped mission and campaign system. This patch has genuinely made me nervous about the direction of the game and where it's headed. From what I have seen, the player base has also been quite frustrated over this update, and I very much fall into that category. I'm tired of the unfinished content and the creative experiments that push the boundaries and would like some solid fucking science done next update, please. I have seen a good number of longtime players quit or express lots of frustration over this update, including a longtime friend of mine, Gefinity. This game is built on community, the content is its players, and if the players leave the game, the game loses its content, and the community starts suffering a cycle that feeds into itself. So for the sake of everybody, I hope something changes soon. Anyways, that's it for this time, guys. My name's Igo Rar. And I'm gonna go cry into my beer. Uh, also, as a side note, I do want to mention big thanks to everyone in my outfit that have been quite patient with me over the last week. I've put in loads more time and effort into videos this last week than I pretty much ever have, or at least that I can recall, and as a result, I haven't really been running ops for my outfit for a while. So I appreciate that, and anyone that would actually like to come and join us on Connery VS, you can find the Discord link in the description down below. Join up, and we'll get you sorted. I'll see you next time.